before we start the video, I'd just like to thank today's sponsor, Swagbucks. Swagbucks allows you to make money and earn cash and gift cards by taking surveys, watching videos, and playing video games. If you sign up using my custom link below, you'll earn $5 just for signing up. I always get my coffee at Dunkin' Donuts, so I'm gonna put my $5 towards a Dunkin' Donuts gift card. But if you prefer something else, you can put yours towards a gift card from Amazon or many other retail stores and websites. Sign up today by clicking my custom link on my pinned comment down there and let me know what you put your free $5 towards. And now, a fireside chat with John. Hello there, everyone. It's been a long time since uh, we've had a little heart to heart or a skull to skull, as it were. <coughs> There's no replacement for sparkling boxed wine. All right, so anyways, I just wanted to make this video, it's a little more casual, uh, just addressing some questions that you've had. And also I just wanna tell you guys a couple funny stories and uh, give my opinion on a couple things that have been going on. Oh, and I just wanna say before we start, that one thing you guys do, uh, what is it, it's the, the oh, the, com the, the comment that you guys do um, about the, my upload frequency, like is he doing all right? Oh my God, he's uploading again. Uh, I, I, I gotta tell you, like I would be making actually like two to three times more uploads if I wasn't just, Freaking rolling on the floor, seized up because of how funny it is that you guys post that on every single video, every single post I make, that you post that. It's time to stop, guys. It's time, where's Filthy Frank when we need him? It's time to stop. He's got a clock. I don't have a clock on me. We'll put it in digital. It's time to stop. Credit to Filthy Frank. And just to address my uh, channel and uh, how things have been going, because you guys have been saying, you know, why doesn't he do this? Why doesn't he do that? What's he doing? So basically since last August, uh, I started up this, this new studio and, um, I've been trying to do um, just, you know, more, I wouldn't say experimental, but we're just trying to, you know, challenge ourselves, push ourselves each time, try to make stuff that's new and fresh and funny and take it into, into and take it in directions that you may not have expected. It, it, it takes time and a decent budget to make some of the stuff we make here. So we're doing it actually quite quickly, I think, for <laughs> what we've been uh, given. But we really like making these videos for you. You know, for the people saying like, where are the video game videos that he used to make and stuff. Um, it's not that I would never make video game videos again. It's just that I'm trying to follow like what I think is funny, what I think, you know, will be relevant and, and people will enjoy. And I don't think just going back just because I used to do something is something that I should do. I may make another video game video in the future. I don't know, but it's it, it, it's got to feel right and I, I'll know it when I see it. So we are listening and we want to make what you want to see while also, you know, making what we want to make and also trying to challenge ourselves, up our game, get better at what we do and progress. So um, hopefully that answered the questions you have on that, if you had them at all. Here's some stuff that uh, I just wanted to address that was just, of course, so the Notre Dame Cathedral one, where I up uploaded the hunchback part, the thing is, because, because of my sponsors, I, I had a date that I had to upload it, and as I was uploading it, I like went to Twitter and was like, I was like, oh, Notre Dame is No! I was like, this gothic ass building has been standing in France for like 1,000 years, but it's gotta come down today when I'm uploading a Notre Dame joke, of which how many of them are there out there? Some great memes came out of that. Can we just look at, I'm gonna look up the John Tron Notre Dame memes because I honestly, I, I, at first I was like sweating a little bit. I've got a hunch that this may be inappropriate today. When you fuck up at work. Hey, comedy plus tragedy equals time, you know? Wait. That's not how it goes. Tragedy plus comedy equals time. Time plus comedy. I don't know, you fucking know what I mean. <laughs> now, another stroke of luck was OJ Simpson. At one point we actually did plan to release the actual, the workout on a VHS or a DVD and sell it, but we just didn't do it. We just put it in the video like that. Um, but also it was supposed to be like a real workout tape uh, at, at a certain point. Like I was actually vlogging at a certain point. Maybe I'll release it one day. Oh shit. Oh, is it? Oh, oh no. Don't hurt it. Wait, wait. wait. Jesus, hang on. Is it going to fly? No, hang on. We got it. Oh my God. It really was a squirrel in here. And uh, the O.J. Simpson bit we found a year ago. Nobody was talking about O.J. then. 
He might have even still been in jail from the, the Las Vegas thing. Then one, like one, two weeks before we're, we're, we're set to release this thing, OJ comes back to Twitter. And just like the Notre Dame thing, we're like, are you serious? So we had to work it in. Oh, just so you know, uh, one of my major uh, social media channels that I'm using now is, on, is my Instagram. And uh, I hadn't used it for a long time, but I picked up like, I, I think like December of 2018, I started to really use it. I only had like, I don't know, 90,000 followers and I had like two pictures on it. But I've been using it like very frequently. So if you wanna go follow me there, it's instagram.com slash Jontron show. If you wanna see, <laughs> you wanna see some of my recent stories. Hey guys, uh, I'm gonna, I'm making a pizza at four, 50 a.m. Uh, it's gonna be one of those DiGiorno's. Does that make me relatable or sad? I forgot how to put it the time. I don't know how long has it been there. It's gonna be a burned pizza. <laughs> yeah, I bet you feel like you've been under a rock this whole time now after seeing that, huh? So if you wanna follow me there, it's instagram.com slash Show. Those links will be in the description. Uh, just wanted to shout that out. I wanted to give my opinion on the uh, whole CPM and demonetization state of YouTube. Now, I don't usually talk about this, mainly because I, I, I've always had, I'm not saying other people should have this mindset, but I've always kind of had the mindset of like, I'll work around it. I understand some people can't work around it and it's very unfair to those people, but I do see people nowadays like blurring like words out of their uh, videos and you know, not saying certain things, not cursing. And I thought it was just kind of like, a, what do you say, superstition? But then I realized uh, when I did look at the terms, in fact, I think I can find them here, in its advertiser-friendly content guidelines, the main topics that are not advertiser-friendly, inappropriate language, violence, adult content, harmful or dangerous acts, hateful content, incendiary and demeaning, recreational drugs and drug-related content, tobacco-related content, don't smoke, kids, <laughs> firearms-related content, controversial issues and sensitive events, this is basically everything. What is violence? Snuff videos? Yeah, okay, take those down. But what, if a man punches another man in the face and your, your freaking neural network picks up a fist hitting a face, it's gonna demonetize the video? That's basically how it works. It just has this vague thing. And then like, like, like for instance, look, for inappropriate language, uh, profanity in title or thumbnail image, okay, fine, like, I get that. Strong profanity used repeatedly in a hateful or derogatory way. How does it even know this? It's an automated system, and I think there is, like, a human review element to it. But still, if you're a YouTuber trying to make, uh, you know, uploads every day, and it just flags you, you, you can't make uh, your money in the, in the first, you know, 24 hours, which is the most important part for most YouTubers. That's where they get most of their views. And then it's like, okay, if a human reviews it after that time and says, okay, this is, this is fine, they're not gonna, they'll have lost all that money and there's no way to get it back. Strong profanity used during the beginning part of the video. I mean, what, this is literally random nonsense. The beginning part of the video? Don't say fuck a lot in the beginning, but the, you know, backload that thing with F-bombs and you're fine. <laughs> Advertiser friendly. Strong profanity used multiple times throughout the video, even if bleeped, even if bleeped. How does it know this stuff? Even if bleeped or for comedy, documentary, news, or educational purposes. So everything. So everything can be limited if they feel like it. And it's completely random. It's happened to me randomly, and then I re-uploaded the video with like a different set of things, and it's now it's not limited. I don't <sighs> Violence, blood, guts, gore, sexual fluids. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll let you slide on sexual fluids. We don't, we don't need any of those. Human or animal waste? So you're telling me if my budgie poops on a video? Limited state! Crime scene or accident photos? Like that's the one, okay, fine. I, I'll, I understand. I always understood this to mean kind of like, don't upload snuff videos, don't upload gore. You're not gonna get that monetized. Fair enough. But the one that really gets me, the controversial issues and sensitive events. It says content that features or focuses on sensitive topics or events that is generally not suitable for ads. This policy applies even if the content is purely commentary or contains no graphic imagery. Okay, what? So you can't speak on current events? That, that is essentially censorship. You can say, you can upload on another platform. Like I've said, I consider YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the public soapbox. This is where people go to listen to things. This is where people go to find out things. You can't just say, oh, it's just a private company. It says here, even if it's purely commentary, even if someone says, here's a current event, here's how I feel about it. Let's say they were an anti-war, it, it, it says war. You can't talk about war. What if we went to war and somebody just wanted to say, well, um, 
I, I, I dissent to this. I don't want to go to war. I don't think it's in the country's best interest to go to war. Channels who have a lot of outreach um, may not want to give their opinion on this. And that's, that's to me, it's essentially, it's a type of soft censorship. I think this needs to be amended, looked over, taken to frickin' the Supreme Court. I don't know, I hate this. I think this should be changed. It's like, yeah, for this whole video, Talking about this, is that going to put this in a limited state? Uh, that's the thing, and this, is a th and this is the big thing about it. It seems to strike at random. Sometimes it seems targeted. Sometimes it seems like they blacklist whole channels. Like, that channel talks about stuff that we don't like. Uh, blacklist it, blacklist it. And I don't think they're doing it for, for any nefarious me uh, reasons. I really think it's like uh, advertiser pressure. And every time that one of these companies caves to advertiser pressure, they're doing like, a double-edged sword to themselves and free speech at the same time. And when I say free speech, I mean it in the realist sense of the term, just if, you, if you're discouraging people to talk about certain things, you're going to stifle discourse. You just will. The problem with YouTube is they're very vague and unfair to their creators, in my opinion. I understand they're a big uh, corporation who've got more people to worry about uh, shareholders and whatever than, than us, but it's just so, it's such an unfair and draconian system because they tell you like, if you do this, you might get demonetized. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Like the whole internet thing was like a remix culture where people would take things and put them together and make something new out of them. And I understand that that's not 100% legal. There's like fair use, gray areas and stuff, but they don't even like uh, demonetize. They don't even give them like part of the video. They give, you, they give them all of it for like an accidental five second clip. Sometimes something you have the rights to legitimately, like you've bought the rights to it, the company still claims it and then you can choose to fight it, but if you fight it and you lose, you get a strike against your channel, so it's better just not to fight it. That's how corrupt the system is. Even when you are in the right, you can prove it. It's better not to try to prove it. Thanks, YouTube. This is an example uh, for that for the buying dumb things online video. We, we learned our lesson on this, okay? I'm like, we're not gonna use clips of anyone, anyone's anything. I have a guy who we contact and he makes music for us so that we don't run into these problems. So we had him do the instrumental backing track on the You Are Not A Gnome uh, video. He did the accompaniment. So it wasn't, we didn't just take a karaoke track. We had it uh, from the ground up, you know, made uh, custom. And then I sang the words over it. And I, I thought that parody of songs was covered over under fair use. Like as long as it's transformative. And it, I didn't use the words exactly. I didn't say you are not alone. It was you are not a gnome. I mean, it was a, it was a parody, <laughs> but the system fucking flagged uh, you are not a gnome as a cover, so I was that good. Uh, they thought I was MJ. And I thought the Michael Jackson estate would be getting my money, but no, uh, I looked at it uh, and it was one Robert Kelly. And I, I, I was like, who's Robert Kelly? He might just be somebody who owns the karaoke track or something. And I, I, I put it in um, Google there, and that was one R. <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> so R. Kelly has got all the money from that video. He's gonna need it. He's fighting for his life, man. I'm fighting for my life. Listen to me, Robert, if I can call you Robert, I hope it gets you at least, you know, a, a, a plea bargain or something. So yeah, R. Kelly owns the rights to John Tron's buying dumb things online. This system, in my opinion, is fucking terrible. It's, it's always been terrible, but it's getting more terrible by the day. But Jesus Christ, I mean, if you, YouTube, if you really, if you want to destroy your platform, this is a first step. So <laughs> good job. At any rate, that's been me, and that's been you. Thanks for watching. Uh, we really appreciate your support and viewership. Uh, it always comes off disingenuous when I say it, but we really mean it. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you like what we do in the near future. Mm. But I'm not gonna leave you leave, this is my house.